In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life always be with you. In the waters of baptism, Teresa died with Christ and rose with him in new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. So welcome everyone. I'm Father Richard Lawless and I'm filling in today for your parish priest, Father John Paul Sheridan. So on his behalf and on my own behalf, I extend sympathy to all of you here present. We're gathering this morning to offer this funeral mass in thanksgiving for the life of Teresa Mullen, Nee Ryan of the Station House, Ockram. 
So welcome especially to Theresa's sons, Niall and John. Niall has returned from Australia for this funeral, so we keep his, in mind uh, his wife, Vered, in Australia, and their three children who are grieving with us. We welcome Theresa's sister, Maureen, and her brother, Michael, and welcome to all who have come here today from perhaps some of you who have come a distance to be here to this lovely church of St. Bridget here in Anakura, and perhaps it might be some, for some of you the very first visit, so if so, then you're doubly welcome. Let's keep in our thoughts today also Teresa's departed loved ones. So we're thinking principally of her late husband, Christopher, who died in 2002, and also her parents, William and Katie. Our hope is that they're all reunited now in the kingdom of God's love. Our faith consoles us in times of sorrow such as this, and we know that God is with us. So we draw close to him now in confidence. Lord, you are slow to anger and rich in mercy. Lord, have mercy. You redeem our life from the grave. Christ, have mercy. Your love for us is everlasting. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Teresa, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So please remain seated now, and I invite the readers to come forward and read for us from God's holy word. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud unwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That said, it will be said, see this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand now to greet the Gospel. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a moment. Dear friends, family members, neighbours of Teresa, we gather here today to celebrate her life. A woman who exemplified the virtues of gentleness, good humour, warmth, and unwavering devotion. As we honour her memory, we also entrust her soul to God's eternal care, knowing that she is now at peace in his loving embrace. Teresa was a woman who lived a life of quiet heroism. In her youth, she had dreams of a new life in America. But when her mother needed her, Teresa did not hesitate. She returned home to Ireland, putting aside her own aspirations to care for her mother after she had broken her hip. This decision was not a momentary act of duty. It was the beginning of a life dedicated to the service of others. Her devotion did not end with her mother. Teresa's life was one of constant giving, especially to her family. She was a mother who gave herself completely to the care of Niall and John but particularly to her son, John, who needed her care in a special way. Teresa gave, and she did not count the cost. She was a second mother to Niall's friends. Her life was a testimony to those lovely words of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Teach us to give and not to count the cost. Her sacrifices were made with love, without complaint, and always with a smile. She embodied the very essence of Christian charity, living not for herself, but for those around her. Teresa's faith was the foundation of her life. It was a source of strength and comfort 
especially in her later years. She was a woman of prayer, and her regular reception of the Eucharist was the cornerstone of her spiritual life. The Eucharist, the source and the summit of our faith, nourished her soul and gave her the grace to carry out her vocation of caring for others. Her faith was not just a private devotion. It was a lived reality that manifested in her warmth and kindness towards all who knew her. One of the great joys of Teresa's life was visiting her son Niall and his family when they lived in Israel. While there, she had the profound privilege of visiting the holy sites, walking in the footsteps of Christ. So it's fitting that a woman of such deep faith would be drawn to the land where our Saviour lived, died and rose again. These pilgrimages surely deepened her connection to the Lord and strengthened her resolve to live out her faith in every aspect of her life. In April of last year, Teresa was diagnosed with blood cancer. The treatment was difficult, but she bore it with the same quiet dignity and strength that she had shown throughout her life. Even in her suffering, she remained an example to all, trusting in God's plan and accepting her cross with grace. She passed away peacefully at St. Vincent's Hospital in Dublin. We're grateful to the staff of St. Vincent's for their compassionate care during Teresa's final hours. Their kindness and professionalism allowed her to pass from this life with the dignity and the peace she deserved. As we say our final goodbyes to Teresa today, we do so with a mixture of sorrow and of gratitude. Sorrow, first of all, for all those of you who knew her so well, you will feel this sorrow at missing her gentle presence, her humor and her warmth. But I think also gratitude because you have been blessed to know her to be loved by her and to witness a life lived with such grace and faith. In the gospel passage, which I read for you this morning, St. John tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Teresa believed this with all her heart. She trusted in the promise of eternal life and now it is our hope that she is experiencing the fullness of that promise in the presence of the Lord. So as we continue the celebration of this Mass, let us offer our prayers for Teresa and for her soul. May she rest in the peace of Christ, reunited with her husband Christopher, her parents William and Katie, and all those who have gone before her. And may we all find comfort in the hope of the resurrection, knowing that one day we will be together again in the great kingdom of God's love. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. If you're able to now, please join me in standing for the prayers of the faithful, and I invite our readers of the prayers to come forward. We now put our prayers before God, confident that he will listen to us. Let us pray for Teresa. She fought a good fight and she finished the race. May she now receive the crown of eternal glory that Christ won for us with his death and resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the happy repose of Teresa. May she live eternally in the happiness and light of God's presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Let us pray that Theresa may enjoy the happiness of being united with loved ones. May she find the joy in the company of the saints forever. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that all of us who are grieving for Theresa's loss may be comforted in the knowledge that the Lord will take care of her. We pray especially for Niall, John, Maureen and all her family. Lord, hear us. Lord, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now and the offertory gifts will be brought forward. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Teresa, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim together now in song the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ger, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Teresa, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, uh, remembering St. Bridget especially in this lovely church, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Again, if you're able to, please join me now in standing at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. Oh. 
my heart pardoned me. Then I am still prayed here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up. I invite Liam, on behalf of the family, to say some words. Uh, I am Teresa's nephew. It is with a heavy heart we are here today to say goodbye to Teresa. Teresa, she was born in 1939. She was the youngest of five children of William and Catherine Ryan Station House, Ockram. She went to school in Ockram and St. Mary's in Arthur. At an early age, she went to America. She worked in stocks on Fifth Avenue in New York. After six years, she returned to Ireland. She got a job in Arnett in Dublin. She worked there for many happy years. In 1971, she met the love of her life, Christy Mullen. They got married here in this church in 1972. Uh, <clears throat> they moved to Dundalk where she started her, her family. They had two sons, Niall and John. In, late, in the late 70s, Teresa and her family returned to look after her father as her mother has passed away. That's, that's the sort of person Teresa was, loving, kind and caring. She loved her style, her makeup and a few drinks and a good laugh, and anyone called to her house over the years were made very welcome. Teresa loved animals. A stray cat found its way into Teresa's yard, and Teresa looked after the cat better than you would look after a child. And the cat had two kittens, and she called the mammy cat, and she told them the two kittens to two girls. But the two girls were, tom were tomcats, but she didn't mind anyway. 
and, and then and, 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 there are, and then I will finish with a few lines of a song that Teresa loved to listen to. And seven Spanish angels took another angel home. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liam, for those lovely words. And uh, I want to join with you in, th in the thanks. To, uh, can I say thanks to the sacristan here, Jimmy, for looking after me because I'm a visitor and looking after everything for us as well. And indeed, also to thank the undertakers, Burns, for keeping an eye on everything for us uh, at this time. We rely on these people. And I want to also thank Trish and Michael for providing the lovely music for the celebration of this Mass. So thanks to everyone. Thanks to everyone for being involved uh, in the readings as well. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Teresa may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each and every one of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Teresa. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And so now we bless Teresa's body with holy water, reminding us of the dignity that is ours in baptism. And then we reverence her body with incense, reminding us that our bodies are temples of God's Holy Spirit. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. 
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Teresa in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Teresa in this life. They are signs of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. Teresa, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. In peace now, let us take our sister Teresa to her place of rest. I am in love. 